Right now it is time for us to check sports, and that means it's time for us to bring in Mike Cosi. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Well, the Mets found an interesting way to win their game. I didn't see it yet. <laughs> I didn't see it yet either. But to win a game <laughs> like that is kind of... I don't know whether it's a good omen for the season or a bad omen for the season. Um, from what I've seen of the Mets this year, it's going to be a long... From what I've seen of them so far this year, it's going to be a long year. Uh, so uh, so it was it was it was a walk off by a hit pitch, <laughs> by a pitch. And they say that they re- didn't really get hit, is what I'm gathering from it. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I I have not seen it yet. I have not seen it yet. So, so I can't I can't make any funny or derogatory comments about it. Yeah, I was hoping to see it last night too, but I didn't see it anywhere. Uh, well, uh, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, so anyways, so I, I'm history with that, but I just thought it was a funny way for, and they never really explained why the Mets season was postponed so long. They mentioned the COVID-19, but not they never really explained why they had that big delay in the in the opening for the Mets this, this year. With, it was something, that, something to do with Washington. Yeah. That's, that's my gatherings on it. Right. I don't think it had anything to do with COVID. It had to do with yeah. something going on in D.C. Hey, how, how, how you like this? Uh, uh, the uh, on ESPN, uh, of course, experts talk all the time about blah 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 this blah 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 that. Uh, Alabama's Najee Harris, uh, they've really been putting him down on the air. Is that the receiver? <laughs> yeah. So Why? Wh- I don't know, but what he said, uh, and I won't say. <laughs> he was quoted as saying that uh, the ESPN draft experts can kiss my ass. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. Somebody probably doesn't like him because of something he did or a political stance or something, so he's probably an outlaw for it. And that's probably the reason why the Extra Stupid People Network is picking on him. But I'm glad he said what he did. I'm glad he did what he did. And that's just going to get him in more trouble with the media. But you know what? I like the guy already. Well, I look at it this way. He's a high, he's a college player coming into the big ranks, okay? He's going to get drafted. He's going to play. And all this pre draft stuff to me is just useless babble it's uh, time filler it, but it's not even good time filler no, because it's not because you know what take a look at all these so-called experts where were they where, where were they with tom brady where they I, you know, we can go down the list where were well, they what with about them? all these guys they project to be so good that, and they stink and they stink that's right it's it, it is they should just call it uh, speculation watch. At least in baseball, they call it the hot stove league, and it's just a bunch of people talking baseball. Okay, um, but they don't go crazy when they, when they're, when they're about to do the baseball draft. They don't go no. crazy. Well, football's football's football. Yeah, but so uh, so I like so, Sam Darno was supposed to be the savior for the Jets. How'd that work out? Yeah. How'd that right. extra stupid people <laughs> network? How'd that do? Yeah. So it's just, you know, I'm glad that the you know, player finally has enough saying, hey. No, me uh, too. I'm glad you said it. You know, babble on. I'm, I'm just going to continue to play football and see what happens. All right. Steve uh, Carlton had it, had it dimed down 30 years ago. Yeah. Don't talk to the media. Yeah. Hey, and he now, was 100% right. In hockey, the Bruins beat the Capitals. Uh, the Penguins beat the Rangers 5-2. to two. The Islanders over the Flyers 3-2. Yeah, I was watching that game. It was a good game. And the Devils beat the Sabres uh, six to three. So uh, the, yeah, the, I, fly, the I know the Flyer game. The Islanders were up two nothing. <clears throat> it looked like they were going to put the game away because they had a five minute major called against the Flyers, meaning that as, yeah. as many goals as you can put in in five minutes, the penalty's not over. That changed the game because the Islanders didn't score and the Flyers almost scored and. Uh, the, uh, the Islanders um, gave up two goals, Flyers tied it up, and the game had to go to a shootout. So in what looked like it was going to be an easy win for the Islanders, turned out to be a, li- a little bit of a nail-biter. And the Devils scored six goals against the Sabres after trading their two best players to the Islanders. Figure that one out. Yeah. And the Rangers still stink. <laughs> well, they didn't lose yesterday because they didn't play. Yes, they did. Did they, did they play yesterday? Penguins beat them. All right. All right. Hey, uh, um, I, I guess that's about it. All I have are is, what, do you got? Any, you have anything else? And, and of course, we've got racing this weekend. Uh, just to, just staying locally with the baseball. Looks like it's going to be a long year for both New York teams. And guess who's hurt again? Who? Aaron Judge. Hmm. 
There you go. Already missing games. Yep. And you want to give this guy a big long-term, big-time contract? Give me a break. Show him the door. You got to be kidding me. What they play four games? He's hurt already. What what injury does he have? I don't know. Something's wrong with his side. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, with, with with the injuries that Stanton and Judge got, there's more mystery there than the Loch Ness monster. Yeah, right. Oh, it's the, it's the side. It's the steroids, people. It's the steroids. Wake up. People, people honestly think he's not juicing. Well, he's not saying he is. Well, I, okay. I guess we take him for his word. All right. All right. How about racing this weekend? Keeneland. Keeneland been very, very good to me already, so we're staying there for the weekend. Um, eighth race tomorrow is the Giants Causeway, $100,000, five and a half furlongs on the turf. Um, Ten supposed to line up for this race tomorrow. Um it might rain. I don't know. I mean, I keep trying to get weather reports from there, and it's been kind of sketchy. Uh, a couple of horses I'm looking at. There's a lot of speed in here. The speed of the speed, I think, is the three LEZ. Um, this horse is one for one at Keeneland and pretty good at the distance. Have six out of three out of six ho- times at the distance come up a winner. So we're going to use the speed of the speed with the three. Two other horses I'm looking at. One is the four Dixie and Candyland. Uh, this horse ran a nice race at Keeneland in the fall, going its five and a half furlong distance from sitting off the pace. Has been running in, at Gulfstream, so I'm looking at this horse maybe to make the board at twelve to one for Eddie Keneally, um, training decently at Keeneland and Fairgrounds for this race. Uh, but my top pick is going to be the eight horse charge ch- change of control. Um, this horse has only been at Keeneland twice with one second. Um, has been in the money. 10 out of 14 times at the distance with four wins, and this horse is a bona fide closer. And uh, yesterday I had an 18-to-1 shot, which was my best day, bet of the day at Keeneland. So don't let this price change, you, uh, change your mind. So change of control is going to be my top pick in the Giants Causeway with the three LEZ and the four Candy and Dixieland to round out my three-horse play in that race. After that is the Lexington, a grade three, mine on the 16th. Um, my pick for the Derby, greatest honor, is out of the Derby. So there's a lot of scratching going around because there'll be other horses getting in. So uh, this is a point getter for the Derby. So pay attention to this. One of these horses might wind up in the Derby. The six, the seven horse proxy is a six to five morning line favorite. <clears throat> this horse is. Only won a maiden and an allowance race. Ran in all the stakes races down at, at fairgrounds preparing for the derby. Ran decently, but not real good. So this, this is kind of like a bee horse trying to get in here. Um, at the 6-5 to five price, I think you got to use him. But I'm looking at the 5 horse, Unbridled Honor by Todd Pletcher. Um, this horse broke his maiden pretty nicely at Tampa. Went right from the maidens to Tampa Bay Derby. Ran fourth, got beat seven. That's not too bad considering there's 12 horses in the race. Um, this horse has talent. This is another honor code. Um, so look and see if this horse wakes up. He wakes up, runs a big race tomorrow at Keeneland. Um, he already did the bounce from the maidens to the stakes. He runs big tomorrow at Keeneland. This horse might be going to the Derby. So two horses I'm looking at in a Lexington. <clears throat> the favorite, the seven-horse proxy, and the five-horse unbridled honor. And the race after the Lexington is the Jenny Wiley, a grade one going a mile and 16th on the turf. Six horses lined up in here. Chad Brown has one-third of the field. He has two out of the six runners. Both of those get the Denver boot for my picks this weekend. <clears throat> the three-horse Juliet Foxtrot's going to sit close to the pace for Brad Cox. Three times at Keeneland, never been off the board. Um, this, like I said, this this horse is going to be part of the pace in the race, and I think Juliet Foxtrot is the better of all the speeds. <clears throat> but my top pick is going to be the one horse, Micheline. Um, Michael Stidham, we picked this horse back at Hills, um, in the Hillsborough at Tampa at the beginning of March. He paid dividends for us at 4-1. to one. Um, I think this horse sits off the pace, makes his run, and gets, job, gets the job done again. So Micheline is going to be my top pick in the Jenny Wiley with the three, Juliet Foxtrot, 
and let's see, we hope that Chad Brown's crying is in his Burgoo stew after this race. So those are races. Keeneland's got a nice card tomorrow to go with these stakes. So um, pay attention and have some fun betting Keeneland tomorrow. All right. I want you to have a good weekend. I hope so. And uh, we'll speak to you on Monday and see if Judge recovered from his side injury. <laughs> uh, my money's on no. <laughs> You're right. My money's with you. Uh, well, this is the last year anyway, so you've got a $10 million, $10 million contract this year. He's a free agent next year, so we'll see but what But the happens. Yankees are going to sign him. I That's think, what they shouldn't do. We'll see if they put that $10 million into pitching. You know, I think uh, at this point, uh, that that's well, probably the Yan- where they should go. The Yankees need players. Yeah. I mean, judges judge should go bye-bye, so you need an outfielder. And their shortstop, Gleyber Torres, mm-hmm. is a casualty. Um, I've been saying it all along. This guy can't catch ground balls. He makes too many errors. He made an error the other day, cost him the game. Um, Didi Gregorius is looking much, much better <laughs> as a shortstop for the Yankees. They got rid of him, thought this guy Torres was everything, but I think they didn't have their sunglasses on. They had the Stevie Wonder glasses on where you can't see out of them. So, bad move by the Yankees, and if they sign Judge, it's another bad move. Yankee fans are going to say I'm nuts, that it's just me, but no, no, no. I don't have the Yankee hater hat on right now. It's, it's the Yankees signed Judge. It's a bad Bad move tying up a lot of money to a guy that doesn't play a lot of games. All right. We'll check with you Monday. Have a great weekend, guys. Take care, Mike. Mike Cosby with the Check on Sports this morning here on The Breakfast Club on Robin Hood Radio.